Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. It is a spectacular Rhode Island day with a lot of news. If you haven't seen the headlines this morning, get to Go Local. And two big, big stories this morning. Obviously, last night, President of the United, former President of the United States was indicted for the, his third time. But we're going to Mott and Chase. It's Wednesday. We've got Josh Cullian. Josh, thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. Thanks for having me, as always. OK. So I, you know, I, I heard a statistic. I heard it on the street. I want to verify it. The, the statistic I heard is you've sold more downtown condominiums in the past year than anyone else. Uh, I believe in the free world. Cannot speak to Yemen, Cuba, North Korea. Tough to get information out of those countries. But in the free world, you have sold more. Is that correct? That's the word on the street. And uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, humbling and, and it's an honor, obviously. It's, uh, it's a great statistic. It's something I'm very proud of and worked hard for, for sure. Uh, congratulations. Let's talk about the condo market. You know, we spend so much time talking about the price of single family homes, which continue to go up, up in a way, nearly, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard to even utter, that the, the, the median price of a single family home in Rhode Island is just a tad under uh, $450,000. What's the state of the condominium market? It's, it's not far behind relative to, you know, what you're hearing on, you know, in the news and, and reading about it's, um, Thin inventory, high demand, and um, you know the market for the condo sector is actually, you know, as far as um, you talk about absorption rate being way off, condo market even more significantly off relative yeah. to that. And um, yeah, it's uh, we need more new construction. We've talked about that before, you know, newer developments. So there's a massive, massive demand and um, a, a super low supply. Uh, more so comparatively than the single family house sector, that's for sure. Josh, I talk to a lot of developers, know them well. Um, some of them are still building today, even with the higher interest rates. And what they say is, listen, it's apartments right now. We get tremendous rents, uh, tremendous return on investment. Uh, condominiums, you know, you build them, you sell them, you're out, you're out of the picture. Um, what's that, that demand for rental? Uh, is pushing so many of the developers over to build more rental, rental, rental. How's that impacting, adversely impacting the condo situation? Yeah, it landslides it for sure. It's, a, it's um, you know, and that trends with the builders and kind of monkey see, monkey do. Not that they're naive, but, you know, the, the numbers don't lie. So the, the type of rental numbers they're getting are, you know, kind of justify the idea of why would we, why would we want a condo, you know, to building out and, and sell when we're getting this type of yeah. rent? You know, I think that's where you have to, you, you, you kind of dig deep and you, you do a, a quick audit on, okay, here's what the numbers look like if you did sell. And, you know, a lot of times that it, it's, for them, I feel as though we should really take a second look at that because it's, yeah. there's an for sure. There's, there's, there's a good return on investment um, and if you're getting reservations pre-market while they're being built, meaning you get the units under contract before they're even finished and get the CO, that's, I feel like, incentive enough. And I feel as though that's sort of what's happening now with the, the few developments that are out there as far as condos. Josh, talk a little bit about, you know, Fane Tower's gone the way of the dinosaurs. Superman is not in development right now, despite... Uh, you know, a deal that looked to be in place. Um, you had the most recent uh, condo project, Custom House, but you know, that was 12, 13 units, whatever it was. Um, how do we spark, you know, in your, in your thought process, how do we spark some projects to get some units? Obviously, there's clear demand for people who want to live downtown Providence. How do we get more, more units in the pipeline? I, you know, candidly, just to kind of drive to the point, I, you know, I, I'm not suggesting the process has been arduous, but um, a developer comes into the city or into the state, I think the process, there's a due process for sure. I mean, systematically, uh, I'd like to see that process for them as far as, uh, you know, their RFP request for proposal and going up to some of the local boards to be, yeah. I'm not saying easy breezy, maybe a bit less intensive um, 
to a degree, um, and that will get, in my opinion, things moving a little bit quicker, maybe more cranes in the sky throughout the state, and, you know, it, it's a bit more fluid and, and, and easier process. And, you know, um, nudging and pinging some of the developers like Keith and Shane, if you're watching this, yeah. come back. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> get it, get it, let's, let's make it happen. Let's figure it out, you know, um, and uh, grassroots it to a certain degree. Uh, in New York got hit with a terrible crane accident. A number of people were injured. We made the off-color joke internally. We don't have those problems in Providence because we don't have any cranes, so we don't have to worry about crane safety or crane inspection or, or making sure that the crane doesn't topple over because literally we don't have any. No, right, and I saw that headline. Uh, that was crazy to see that happen. And, you know, that's the, the height there is, you know, significantly taller than most of the, you know, doesn't validate it, but, you know, here, so it's less impactful in that regard. But, yeah, I mean, it's um, something we hope to see soon, sooner than later, certainly. And there's plenty of historic properties that can be redeveloped while, while yeah. retaining sort of a nod to the past and, and, and not butchering it. Uh, completely. We see that the custom house, of course, as we talked about, and uh, there's plenty of other existing buildings that uh, could be retrofitted for sure. You know, we're very good at building five-story uh, uh, apartment buildings uh, that all seem to look very similar to one another, but that's, that, that's for a day with our architecture critic, uh, Will Morgan. Josh, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, how, how much pressure this market's going to feel, you know, if interest rates start to come down, the Fed's sending a little bit of signals that they're going to continue to, you know, at least another 25 basis point, if not two more increases of 25 basis points. Jerome Powell really wants to see uh, inflation down to 2%. It seems like it's a soft landing. The market's doing pretty well. Uh, uh, jobs are spectacularly good. So the economy seems to be pretty robust. There's some danger signs, but overall across the country, uh, those seem to be the, the tenor. Um, you know, at some point, interest rates are going to come down. We have no inventory now. What's going to happen when interest rates come down? Is it just going to be a complete inversion and prices just go through the roof? Yeah, it's an awesome question and, and topic. I, it's it's going to be interesting to watch. and. You know, the Fed met last week, uh, Wednesday, and your point, you know, the, the 25 basis points, it's, yeah. you know, covering now at, f what, five and a quarter to f five and a half. Um, they meet again on September 20th. Um, I've got that marked in my calendar, and there's a lot of data points <laughs> about the pre this previous week with the GDP is exceeding expectations, and as well as the, the the jobless claims is less than you know what was anticipated. So it's just really um, a moving target, uh, more erratic than usual, in my opinion, over the years past, in terms of being able to maybe slowly identify how this evolves. Um, and it, it, it's a tough act, you know, balancing that. Yeah. We don't. Want to, I feel as though the interest rate needs to be stabilized, and I don't. It's going to be interesting to see if they actually uh, raise raise the the, the rate, um, you know, come come the fourth quarter. I, I feel as though uh, lowering it too yeah. too much is going to just be catastrophic to you know the values continuing to just get blown out of proportion in, in, in value. It's going to be. That'll be, that'll be challenging on, on many levels for people because, you know, affordability becomes a massive issue. Is it already kind of teetering on that? When you were a small child, did you ever think you'd be marking off in your calendar, not Easter, Christmas, your birthday, but the meeting of the Fed? I did say that, didn't I? Um, I <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it comes with the territory and, and, <laughs> and what I do. It's a privilege and, and um, I, it's knowledge that you can kind of convey to those that your clients and, and others and have great conversations and, and, and try to figure it out together and navigate accordingly, certainly. Uh, so I think it's important. You talk to a lot of buyers, like most everybody in your industry right now. For those who are looking for a condo, especially something interesting, downtown living or something else uh, in, that, in that genre, what are you telling to buyers uh, who are looking for that kind of extraordinary condominium? 
you know, the, the op, stay patient um, and be open-minded relative to not settling, but uh, being open-minded to maybe not getting everything on your wish list or search criteria and, you know, within reason, certainly. Um, and also, you know, uh, the idea that then remain patient and, and, and um, keep a firm upper lip, upper lip and, <laughs> you know, you just, when, when, when something is on the radar, you know, be ready to pull the trigger fast, uh, certainly, because there will be others that are going to want to do the same. And, and um, you know, I, I all, all the associates out there out of my camp and more importantly, all the other brokerages in the state, um, it, it, it pays well over the years to play well in the sandbox with one another because in this type of market, hearing about or knowing about, you know, inventory they have coming up really helps the consumer and, and that's right. what it's about today right you know connecting the dots and um everybody has a fair shot of course it's just more of making getting those connections for the for, the, for your client for the especially the buyer seller side completely different you know story uh, whether it's a condo or a house multifamily, etc so um josh you get the last word what should people be looking at over the course of the summer and into the fall buying season, the, the spring buying season finally came around a little bit late. Um, are we going to see a more traditional end of the summer and a more traditional fall buying season? Will we see more inventory? As of today, there's about just over 800 single family houses for sale actively available, all different price points, multifamilies and condos. You're, you're hovering just over the 150 unit mark that's dismal in terms of supply yeah. and demand, the absorption rate, right? So I think, um, you know, put your toes in the sand, enjoy the local amenities. <laughs> um, honestly, you know, recharge the batteries a little bit. And, and you know, I'd like to think that the, uh, the fall market um, hopefully will be a bit more robust with uh, new inventory and, um, you know, take advantage of the summer season right now, support local. And that's kind of, that's, that's the mantra at the moment, the vibe I'm, I'm you know, telling clients and it, you might get the phone call from me while you're on that beach, you know, like, yeah, that's hey, right. you know, jump off the blanket and, and come, come, <laughs> come meet me. We're going to look at this house or condo or whatever the property may be, piece of land. So. Josh Cullian, thank you so much from Mott and Chase Sotheby's International. Always appreciate you taking the time. For everybody else, stay tuned. There's a lot of very significant developing stories. Uh, our news editor, Kate Nagel, had an interesting story about how, uh, a, uh, a man in the real estate industry who also owns a strip club now has uh, bought the tax sale to uh, Camp Cronin, a uh, city property that had not been uh, paying its taxes. Uh, it had been used for many years by the city of Providence for programming for the elderly and for children uh, down in Narragansett. That's now in the control of the same owner who owns Club Desire. So, Never, never boring day in Rhode Island. We've also got a big story about Providence School Committee uh, gave the green light to a new vendor for about a $70 million contract for the maintenance of the buildings. That company, just last year it was reported, paid a $140 million settlement for uh, de facto wage theft. Uh, it had also been the subject of a major expose by PBS's Frontline about endangering workers and the uh, abuse of workers. So very complicated stories, very interesting stories. Take a look at both those. Stay tuned for much more. We've got a, a number of stories breaking throughout the day. And uh, do take a break and enjoy this great weather. Stay safe, everybody.